Welcome back everybody. Um, I'm going to show you all a basic starter kit, what all you're going to need to get started. Um, I made a video like this a couple months ago, but it somehow got deleted. Um, I don't know if I pocket did it or what happened, but uh, I think this one will be a little bit more uh, involved because I forgot a few things last time. So uh, let's get started with the brushes. Um, I've heard time and time again, um, if you're going to start out, a good brush to start out with, and it is a professional brush, there is no starter brushes, um, would be the MAC um, double zero here. And that is the blue wrap, so that's the ferrule that holds the um, the brush here is blue. Uh, it is a 10 series as compared to the 20 series, which has a green wrap. You want to get the blue wrap. This is about... $15 depends on where you get it, but estimated $15. You could find those uh, at Blick Art uh, Supply or um, you can find them on eBay. It's a good spot uh, where I like to get my brushes just because I got my PayPal set up for it. Um, you can get these almost anywhere. I mean, you got to order them generally if you're out in the middle of nowhere. You're going to have to order a lot of this stuff. Uh, I'm going to try to tell you where everything can be found. Some of these things can be found at hardware stores. So that would be the very first brush I would go for, for straight lines, um, dagger, uh, I'm sorry, sword designs or uh, old school designs. That would be your brush to go to. Um, if in case you want to get into scrolling, which is a more round, kind of more fancy uh, style I would say the Kafka number three is a really good brush and you can do traditional designs with this as well or old school designs um, this is also about 15 to 20 dollars again uh, you can find these on eBay or on Steve Kafka's website so just type in Steve Kafka pinstriping on Google and you'll be able to find one of these this would be mainly for scrolling and you can do a little bit of script lettering or lettering with it if you'd like, or outlining. It can be used for various things, but mostly scrolling and design work. Um, you're going to want to get a magazine or a few magazines. You can get these for free anywhere. The glossier, the better. That way you can um, mix your paint with your reducer and palletize uh, the paint. That's what I use. Again, all of this stuff is opinionated. It's what I use, it's what I started off with, and it's what I've been using ever since. So other people use different things, just keep that in mind. If you hear a different opinion, weigh out what works best for you, what's available. All right, <clears throat> the next thing you would want is um, a cheap frame. This is glass here, and this is like a plastic frame. I get these from Walmart for 6 to $10.00. Um, the bigger the better, just to give you more room to play. Uh, but the reason I like glass is uh, you can scrape off the design later or you can wipe it real easy. Um, I've tried plexiglass, it's harder to wipe. Um, but glass is um, the way to go for me. Uh, they have this nice black background. As soon as you take away that little picture that it's got on the front, you'll see a black background. So you don't have to paint anything dark or you know, it kind of comes as is. Super easy to work out. Six bucks, ten dollars at Walmart, maybe fifteen bucks if you get the real big one. Um, the paint you're going to want to start off with is one shot. Um, it might look like this, or it might look like this. I would suggest you get two colors to begin with. Um, I would say maybe white and red. So you know you can mess around by mixing the paint or blue and red or blue and white you know I would stay away from black stay away from the metallic colors to begin with because they are difficult again you can order this stuff on Blick, uh, Blick Art online uh, they got pretty good free shipping deals if in case you buy a bunch of stuff uh, you can find this stuff on eBay um, you can look around on actual uh, one-shot website to see where they distribute this stuff to. So you might find somewhere local to buy it. Um, I found somewhere in Tampa near me that sold some of it, but it was actually a little more expensive to buy from the store than online. So you might want to try online for this. 
Um, if you, especially if you buy 10 or so cans, you can get a pretty good deal. They're roughly 10 to $20 uh, per uh, little can like this, depending on the color. Um, you're usually going to find them for 15 bucks, but it does vary. Some are around 10, some are a little over 20. It depends on the color. So I would say you get two of these. If you're on a real tight budget, just get one, maybe red, maybe blue. But I would definitely stay away from black or metallic colors to begin with. Um, these uh, Dixie cups. I think these are wax-free Dixie cups. You can buy these at, you know, Dollar Store or Publix or Walmart. I mean, you can get these almost anywhere. These are just little Dixie cups. You'll use these to mix up colors. Or if you have a decent sized job, you could put a, a nice large puddle in there and it should last longer than to, you know, squirt it onto the magazine because that'll dry up quick. So um, you're going to want to get yourself a little bag of these. They're probably less than $5 for, I don't know, 50 of them or 100 of them. They're pretty cheap. You can get these almost anywhere. <clears throat> Next up. Containers to hold your um, mineral spirits and your lacquer thinner. Um, these are plastic. I have one that's made out of glass. You can, again, get these anywhere. I mean, I go to Goodwill and buy these. Just something thick and sturdy to hold uh, the solvents because those are kind of strong. They could eat through these Dixie cups. So you can find these for like a dollar each, two dollars each. I mean, anywhere. You don't have to go to a real craft store. I, I think this was a part of a laundry lid or something. You know, you could you could use almost anything. Um, but you do want to get a couple to hold your mineral spirits when you go to um, reduce your paint. You're going to want to dip into something. Also, when you clean your brushes, you're going to want to use these to really wash them out good. Um, you can get those anywhere. Just about. Baby, baby food jar. That works great. Um... Mineral spirits. This is what I use to reduce the paint. Um, you can find this at Lowe's, Home Depot, any hardware store, any paint store. You can find uh, odorless mineral spirits. You're going to want to get the clear uh, clear ones. Never get the milky white stuff because that is no good. This big jug is probably $12. Bucks. Uh, you can get a smaller canister like, like this for just about the same price. Uh, it's usually better to get the big jug if you can. You know, you can find that at Walmart too. I think that's where I get these. Um, and that is for uh, reducing paint and the final stage of cleaning your brush. It's a two-stage thing that I do. Um, lacquer thinner I use strictly for cleaning the brush. So when I'm done painting, um, the first thing that I dip into to clean would be this lacquer thinner. Uh, that really breaks up the paint real well. I'll wipe it off with a shop towel, and then I'll use the mineral spirits to really get it good and clean. This takes off all the paint. This kind of breaks it up some. Now you can use this to reduce as well, but I wouldn't recommend it until you figure out exactly what you're doing. This is very hot in the sense that it's super strong, so it could affect the paint job. Um, I don't actually use it to reduce just because I don't really know <laughs> what it would do to paint. Um, I use mineral spirits pretty easy. Uh, you're going to want to get some shop towels. So it's this nice blue, uh, stuff. You can order this online as well. Amazon or Walmart, or you can get them, uh, real easy at any auto parts store. So O'Reilly's, uh, advanced discount, all them places. They're usually about five bucks, uh, I like to cut them into pieces because you generally don't need an entire towel. I mean, one towel can kind of do a lot for you. I cut them into pieces because I'm cheap and I try to save them. Um, so you're going to want to get some popsicle sticks as well. You can get these at uh, any craft store or Walmart or Target. Um, anywhere there's kind of some crafty things. This you will use to mix your paint. Um, with these sticks and they're I don't know two bucks for a giant pack uh, but you're gonna want to get some of these 
you're going to want to get something to open up your cans with. So this is an actual can opener. I don't know, I think it's five bucks. You can totally use a screwdriver. You do not have to have one of these. I just came across one cheap, so I grabbed it. Um, stuff to write with. So there are, you can use grease pencils, but make sure you use them lightly. Keep in mind, all of this stuff to mark, say you want to make a grid, you're doing some work, make sure you use it very lightly. Do not push down hard. You don't want super thick guidelines because it could show up in the paint. It can leave some sort of ghost mark, as they say. Um, but uh, one of the pencils people like to use a lot is the uh, Stedler Lumo Color Non-Permanent Pencil. So you could probably get, you know, I got a red, black, and a yellow one of these. Another option is the Papermate Flare Tip Medium. Uh, you can get these at any drugstore. These are great because they even show up on black paint jobs because they're kind of an offset black. Uh, but these wipe off super easy. Both of these should wipe off after the paint dries, after you're done, within a day or two uh, with water. I try water first or Windex, uh, but these are good to make a grid with or to draw out your design. If, if you're still early on, you're drawing out your design. This is good stuff right here. But remember, very light. You don't need to push down hard with this. Super important. <clears throat> um, tape. Any scotch tape would work to give yourself some lines to try to practice off of. Um, I'm not sure where I got this red roll, but um, start off with just some regular old scotch tape, uh, the kind of vanilla colored ones. And that'll help you uh, to put some lines down, some straight lines, and kind of practice straight lines. If in case uh, you want to make a border or something, eventually you're going to use tape. I mean, you can use it to give yourself um, marks. Like if you don't want to mark it, you can measure down and put a piece of tape here put a piece of tape there and understand that that is a certain distance um, so tape is very useful i don't know you could probably get that at any any store for uh you know five bucks less than five bucks um a ruler try to get one with a soft back or plastic um you know five bucks anywhere as well i'm sure you know where to get a ruler at um, that's important to know how far out you're going, how far up you're going. Uh, try to find the center of things. It's good to have. Um, this is kind of not totally necessary, but it's good to have a brush box to store all of your brushes in. Because, you know, if you start to get into it, you're going to acquire more than two brushes, I'm sure. Um, you can get these on eBay or uh, Blick Art Store, I'm pretty sure, got them, or... Uh, there's a few different websites. If you just type uh, pinstriping brush box on Google, it'll pop up. I can hit some stuff on either side. But they're made out of, out of aluminum, and they hold a decent amount of brushes, and they're very sturdy. These are about $25. So they're kind of pricey. If you feel like you can do without, just make sure that wherever you store your brushes, they are laying flat and and not getting crud all over them so no dust try to have them covered at least something over them uh, and make sure that they are laying flat because the brushes eventually learn how they should be um, so considering you want to do straight lines you don't want that thing to be all curved up and uh, that takes me on to oil when it's all said and done and you've cleaned your brushes you're going to want to dip them in some oil to uh, keep the keep the brush hair wet. Um, I use motor oil, regular cheap motor oil. But some people would recommend that you buy um, actual brush preserve. So you can get some of that uh, from Vondego. Um, if you type in Vondego uh, pinstriping supplies on Google, you can find some. Or uh, Steve Kafka sells some stuff too uh, under the Steve Kafka website. Or you can do like me and just get some motor oil. But it's very important that these do not dry up on you. You want to keep them uh, moist. And that way the paint 
doesn't dry up uh, in the ferrule and breaks your brushes bristles off um, so yeah that's I would suggest all of this stuff um, there's probably a couple things you could do without if if you're really on a tight budget maybe just get one color right maybe don't get the brush box maybe just get one of these you know maybe just get the paper mate maybe just get uh, something other than popsicle sticks if you want to reuse a screwdriver you could just use a screwdriver and wipe it off if you're mixing paint um, that's an option uh, if you could find some glass just laying around you could just paint the back of it black uh, that way you're not seeing whatever it's laying on and you don't have to buy the frame so just some options you know if, if, if you got containers laying around you don't have to buy any to make it cheaper uh, but if you'd like to go purchase these things like I said it should be under two hundred dollars for you to get everything to get started um, I'm thinking maybe like 150 if that and if y'all could think of anything else put it in the comment section you know I'm not a I'm not the a professional I'm very passionate about this craft and I'm just trying to help other people that are just learning I've, I've got about two and a half years into this um, and I love it it's been a lot of fun it's been very rewarding um, here I'll show you a little little Darth Vader piggy bank that I just did so you know if you practice enough you'll eventually get there I'll put that right there all right y'all thank you for watching please share please subscribe um, the more people we have watching um, the more information we might get from them and uh, the more it helps me to continue making quality videos for y'all. I appreciate it and have a good night. Bye-bye.